Welcome to part five for our Galaxy Defiance space shooter tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be creating a enemy template scene. Now, so far in the series, I hope that you have come to appreciate the benefits of, or started to appreciate the benefits of composing your scenes rather than trying to create inheritance for everything. Um, that's a common phrase is composition over inheritance. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that doesn't mean you should never use inheritance. There are inheritance is still a powerful tool, it's still a useful tool. Uh, and in some cases, I feel like inheritance is the best um, solution to certain problems. However, we do want to lean toward composition, especially in game development where things can change quickly and we need to be able to. Uh, stay flexible in our system. So Godot already leans into that with its node and scene structure. However, Godot also allows us to create uh, inherited scenes. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to create, in this video, is create a scene that will be a base scene for all of our enemies. And it will contain some nodes in it all of the future enemy scenes we create, well, not all of them, but most of the future enemy scenes we create will inherit those nodes. And so Godot has scene inheritance and we're going to be using it here. So let's start by creating a root, a new scene with a root node of a node 2D and we'll just call it enemy like this. Okay, and we can save this if we come back uh, we'll create a new folder, we'll call it enemies, and we'll save it inside of enemies. There we go. Now this enemy is going to have some nodes. The first one is a animated sprite node. There we go. It's also going to have a move component. And it's also going to have a scale component. Well, let's see. It's going to have a stats component. Drag that up. Although we're not actually using this stats component yet, so I don't know if I should add it, but the stats component just gives it a health value. And we'll set its default health value to three. Well, actually, let's not mess with that yet. Okay, so we've got our stats component, our animated sprite component, our move component, and it's going to have, this one's not gonna have a spawner component, but it's going to have a visible on-screen notifier. Oh, that's an enabler. We want the notifier. The enabler isn't the one we want. We just wanna be able to know when we've left the screen. And we're gonna have an odd, uh, We'll have a scale component. We'll have a flash component. And we'll have a shake component. And we're gonna have some more stuff on our enemy, but these are components that will be common to pretty much all the enemies in our game. Now, let's say you wanted to make an enemy that didn't have some of these components. You could easily just compose that enemy without inheriting from this one. And uh, that's one of the nice things about using composition is that you can, um, you can have a lot of the same logic without having to worry about inheriting everything else. Um, you can choose, you can pick and choose which logic you want to be on that enemy. So we kind of get the best of both worlds here. So we can save this. And now what we can do is uh, if we come into our enemies folder here and let's give it a script too so we'll just give it a script called enemy and we'll get access to um, most of these I think most of these components I don't think we need access to the sprite we should need access to everything else so I'm just going to drag them in and now we have to type these so stats component as stats component, move component, as 
move scale as scale flash. Really, you only have to do this if you want autocomplete, but it helps to prevent errors if you have autocomplete, so I do recommend it so that Godot can help um, remind us what function names are and um, make sure that we're spelling them right. It's just useful to have this strict typing um, to know that. Okay, so uh, we're going to set up, I'm trying to think here. We do want to set up the visible visibility on screen notifier. So let's connect to that signal. So visible on screen notifier dot screen exited dot connect to view free, right? So we just the enemy destroys itself when it goes outside of the room. And that's going to be the only one that we connect because we're going to save. There's going to be some other connections we need to make, but we'll save those for later. Uh, now that we've set up this basic enemy scene, this enemy template, we can right click on it. And we can select new inherited scene. And what this will do is it will create a new scene that inherits from enemy. And look, see all these yellow nodes here? All of these nodes are inherited from this enemy scene. So let's call this new one green enemy. And we'll save it inside of enemies. Now we have this green enemy scene. Now if we were, come to, if we were to come to our enemy scene and we were to add, say, just a new node, right? And save it like that. If we come to green enemy, you can see that green enemy now has that node inherited as well. And these aren't yellow anymore, and that's kind of a glitch um, because they should still be yellow to indicate that they are inherited from this base, this enemy scene. If we were to try and delete this node from here, Godot would say can't operate on nodes the current scene inherit from. Okay, yeah, so it's saying we can't delete this node because technically that is an inherited node inside of our green enemy. So if we come back to enemy, we can delete it and save, and then green enemy won't have it anymore. And that's how scene inheritance works. And that's gonna be it for this video. It's a shorter one. Um, in the next one, we'll start creating our green enemy and add it into the game. Uh, if you're interested in my Godot courses, they're on sale right now for a fall sale. It's a pretty heavy discount, so go check that out. There'll be a link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support, and I'll see you in the next video.